I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I want to welcome you to today's video where we're going to continue a discussion of static routing. And even if you are comfortable with the theory of static routing for your exams and for real world applications, you'll still get a lot out of this video because I'm going to work in some pings, some debugs, and some network troubleshooting that will benefit you in your studies and in the real world as well. Now in today's lab, I've already got a frame relay network up and running between our three routers, one, two, and three, and we're in a hub and spoke configuration. Nothing complex here. We will test that connectivity before we actually start building the lab, which you always want to do. And what we're going to be working on here with static routing is giving R3 the ability to ping router 2's loopback. So let's take a look at those addresses again. And again, as in all my labs, the last octet of any network is going to be the router number. So router 1's frame relay interface, serial interface, is 172.12.123.1, and so forth. So let's bring the routers up here. We're going to start on router 3 and ping router 1 across our frame network. We're up and running. Let's ping the other spoke, and we're up and running. It only takes a moment to do this, but... When you're working in labs, especially as they get more complex, you definitely want to test your present connectivity before you start adding something to it. So let's ping 172.12.123.1 from here, and then dot .3, and we're up and running. So we have our connectivity across our frame relay network, and we'll go back to router 3 now. And what I want to ask you first, what do you think is going to happen when we try pinging router 2's loopback from router 3. We're going to send a basic ping here. And while this happens or doesn't happen, let's try pinging 2222. It's router 2's loopback. If you want to learn more about pings, especially extended pings, I do have another video here on my website and on YouTube as well dealing with that subject. So let's take a look at that. And as we expected, we're not getting anything, or actually we're getting something we don't want, five timeouts. Now if we look at the routing table, there's a pretty good reason for that. There's only one network that Router 3 knows about, 172.12.123.0. It's directly connected, and that's it. But we need to know how to see exactly what's going on when something like this is not working, when pings aren't working. And a good way to do that is by running debug IP packet. As always, just a warning here, you never want to run debugs on production networks when you're not comfortable with the result or if you don't know what the result's going to be because it can be a lot of result. It can be uh, very verbose. And this one in particular, uh, I've actually seen this in larger lab environments actually lock up a lab router. So you don't want to run this in a production network unless you're sure of the result and definitely not at a peak time. And here we're not getting anything yet because we're not running any protocols. We're not really running anything. So we're going to go ahead and run something here and send that ping again and see what happens. And this gives you more of a clue as to what's going on. And you can see one word that keeps coming up at the end of our output here, and that's unroutable. Well, it's unroutable because there literally is no entry in the routing table that matches 2222, and there's nowhere for it to go, so it's not even leaving the local router. So that's a problem. That's not good. And we could configure dynamic routing protocols, but obviously here we're going to work with static routing, and we always configure static routing with the IP route command. I'm going to show you some iOS help readout here. You don't need to know all these for your CCNA and CCNP exams. What we're really interested in here is the destination prefix. And as I mentioned in the previous video, we've got options with static routes. We can create host routes, which match one destination and one destination only. We can create one that will match a subnet, or we can create a default static route. And that's one that's going to be the default, really the last resort, if there's no other match in the routing table. And that's actually what we're going to create here. And when you're doing that, you want to put all zeros for your destination prefix, and then all zeros for your destination prefix mask. Then you've got an interesting option. You can either configure 
the next hop, the forwarding router's address, which in this case would be router 1, right, because that's our spoke. We might say, well, I just want all these packets to be sent to 172.12.123.1 and hope that router 1 knows what to do with them. Hope that that router knows. Or we could configure a local interface and say, well, you know, just send them out this interface and a downstream router will take care of it. So we've got some options there. And what I'm going to put here is 172.12.123.1, which is router 1. That's the forwarding router's address. We do have some other options here. They're more advanced. We're going to leave those alone for right now and just put in that IP route. So now we have created a default static route. Let's run the route show IP route command again. Watch that asterisk right there. Because if we create a regular static route, a non-default static route, that asterisk will not be there. And the asterisk in your routing table, I know there are a lot of codes here, candidate default, well in this case it is the default because it's the only candidate. So we now have a default static route where basically we are saying any packets that do not have a more specific match in the routing table, go ahead and send them to 172.12.123.1. And we know we can reach that because we already pinged it. So what's going to happen then when we send the pings to 2222? First let's run undebug all. And then we're going to ping 2222 again. We know we have an entry for it in the routing table. That default static route will match this. But what's going to happen when I send this ping? We get a really strange readout. We get three letter U's and two periods. Now there's an exception to every rule, but generally what this means is that there is a downstream router that doesn't know how to handle it, that doesn't know what to do with these packets. Let's run debug IP packet again and then send the ping again and see what happens. We're getting all kinds of stuff here and I will scroll back up so we can look at this. Well you can see that they're, they're leaving. Remember before where it just said unroundable? Well this time they are going out but the problem is is that the downstream router doesn't know what to do with them. And the reason I'm, I'm kind of hammering away at this point, it's not enough in this case for router 3 to have a route to get to this loopback address. Router 1's got to have one too. And we have it configured router 1. So there's a pretty good chance when we go up to router 1, which we'll do now, there's no route here. It doesn't, router 1 has no idea what to do with the packet that it's supposed to send to 2222. Has absolutely no idea. So that's why we get that unusual u.u.u. 99% of the time when you see that on your local router when you're running a debug, it means, hey, the packets are leaving, but they're going downstream and there's a router down there that doesn't know what to do with them. And in our next part of this video, we're going to configure router 1. We'll run some more debugs, some more troubleshooting, and we'll finish the connectivity here and use another kind of static route to configure this lab. I want to thank you for your time in watching this particular video. I want to invite you out to the website, www.thebryantadvantage.com. Over 250 free Cisco tutorials, videos, and practice exams waiting for you, no matter what Cisco certification you're working on, whether it be CCNA, wireless, voice, security, CCNP, or CSET. There's something out there for everybody. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you on the website.